Hello world, my name is Victor Engelmann and in this video I will show the GNU Stream Editor SED or Z to you. Now uh, the GNU Stream Editor is a very useful tool and um, yeah, when you look at uh, Stack Overflow or other programming resources it's often used in uh, many ways and um, I personally often only use it for pattern replacement so uh, going through some uh, text files and replacing something based on a regular expression but uh, and that's a very good use for SED but uh, well, for that but uh, that's really a very powerful tool that can do a lot more than that and uh, yeah I want to show you uh, some of the more advanced features of it so uh, so that you can really get the most out of it so um, the first thing I want to talk about is the manual of Z um, because as manuals go this is one of the best manuals that I've seen in my life um, so it's really informative it uh, explains just the right, just the right amount of uh, details so that you can really understand what it's doing um, and yeah the the basic pattern how you how you use Z um, is here in chapter 2.1 um, you call Z you give it a command and a file and then it will run over that file and edit it um, according to this uh, script and yeah here's uh, already a an example where the word hello is uh, replaced with the word world on a file called input.txt and the result is written to output.txt. Um, yeah, oftentimes you don't uh, uh, you don't even pass um, a file to it. Um, you can just uh, give it a uh, a command and then it will read standard input instead you know like here um, uh, you pass the input through the uh, standard input pipe and uh, yeah you might uh, put a dash here to tell it hey the input is coming from uh, standard in but even if you omit that it will still work so um, uh, I personally don't uh, use this parameter very much. I tend to use it just in this way. Um, but uh, yeah, if uh, if you're running on a file, this is technically the uh, the more performant way to do it. And uh, okay, if you want your uh, output file to be the same as your input file. Uh, then you give it the parameter dash i to tell it uh, do an in place edit so read this file change it and then uh, save the result under the same name okay so that's how you basically call it um, as i said uh, i personally uh, usually use use it in a way of uh, just passing text through the uh, standard input into it okay like this and uh, yeah, that works um, but uh, yeah let's look at this uh, script parameter because that's a really interesting thing um, and yeah here in chapter 3.1 we have this very informative uh, thing here uh, it tells us how z commands are generally uh, formatted and if you only take out of this video one thing take this so this is really uh, the the fundamental thing that you need to know that uh, z commands are built like this you have an address where you say i want my uh, my input to be changed on this line or on line uh, I don't know 5 to 10 or so 
and then this x says how do I want to change um, this line and then the options are just some uh, additional information uh, that are depending on what you are trying to do like uh, if you uh, want to append something uh, then uh, the stuff after the append is uh, is what you are appending. You see, uh, I have here Z, line one is our hello, and uh, I append foobar, so that's the next line here. So uh, yeah, as I said, uh, you tell it where you are uh, trying to change something what you are trying to change and then the uh, some additional information depending on your command as i said append then uh, you tell it what you want to append so let's talk about these addresses um, uh, the program seek uh, sequence uh, gives us just some uh, numbers uh, on a uh, uh, separated by lines. Uh, they use that program always as for, for examples in the Z manual and I think that makes sense. So um, um, yeah, the, um, I will use that here also and um, yeah, let's say we want to delete something. Let's delete line number two. Okay, so having a single number in front of your command means uh, you are doing the thing you're doing to the line with that number. So uh, here I say delete line number two and line number two is gone. Um, you can also say uh, two comma four, for example. So you can have two numbers separated by a comma and then um, the command is applied to uh, all the lines in that range. Um, the, you can use a dollar, that means uh, the end of the file. So if I delete uh, with two comma dollar, it deletes everything after, uh, and, or, and it deletes line two and everything after that. Um, then you can um, search for something instead of having an exact line number you can um, have this uh, you can have a regular expression between uh, slash characters and then um, that will work on all lines that match this uh, regular expression um, there are also some extensions to that, so um, like you can uh, uh, here you can use absolute numbers, you can uh, search for something, uh, you can have ranges and um, Oh, I didn't even know that. Uh, you can have a regular expression, follow it with an exclamation point, and then uh, it will work on all the lines that don't match this um, regular expression. That's also good to know. Uh, yeah, numbers, a dollar sign. Um, and yeah, this is a, um, a GNU extension. So this is not the POSIX Z. Um, you can start at a line, here it's one, and then work on every third line starting from there. Okay, so here it starts at one, and then one plus three is four, uh, four plus three is seven, seven plus three is ten, so every third line is uh, printed here. Okay, so that's the addresses. Um, 
Now uh, let's talk about the commands. Um, as I've already shown you, uh, you can just delete a line, or uh, yeah, multiple lines, any lines that your address applies to. And um, yeah, you can do the opposite. Instead of a D, you can have a P, which prints of a line. So now you have it twice here, you now two, two. But um, wait, let me uh, do it on a range two, three. Um, this prints the second line a second time and the third line a second time. Um, because it, this works uh, on a line by line basis. Okay, so uh, this does not print line two and three um, after you have already seen the two and three. Okay, uh, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, printing a line doesn't make that much sense, I think. Um, because why would you want to uh, duplicate a line? I mean, there's certainly some use cases for that, but um, I think a better use case for that is if you use the parameter dash n, that uh, turns the printing off the, by default. You know, um, when you run that normally, it reads a line, does something to it, prints it. And with dash n, it reads a line, does something to it, but doesn't print it unless you explicitly tell it, hey, I want this to be printed. And then like that, you can extract uh, text from your uh, input. Um, yeah, I've already shown you the command A. I've already shown you the command A, which appends some text. Um, you can use uh, C to replace text. So this deletes the line and then uh, replaces it with uh, your text here. Um, I've just created a file hello world.txt containing the text hello world. Um, and I did that so that I can show you the command R. Um, R can read a text file hello world.txt and that uh, inserts that text file at the uh, given position. Let's see, um, when you're processing a text file, um, you can have the command capital F, which um, adds the current file name. You see, so um, I'm processing hello world txt and I do it by uh, adding a the, the file name in line one. If I didn't uh, give any uh, um, address where I'm doing it, I'm actually doing it to every line. So here I have it in front of every line. Okay, we've had the append. Um, can also have an insert that inserts the text before the line. Okay, these were all quite simple things. Um, but uh, yeah, the really interesting stuff is um, that you can have multiple commands uh, and you separate them uh, with uh, just a semicolon. And uh, that's why I personally always put things in these uh, single quotation marks so that uh, the bash doesn't mess with this uh, parameter at all. So you can delete line two and append to line three 
a foobar. Okay, so you can do multiple things at once to your um, uh, to your input. Um, that's pretty good. Uh, one thing that I want to note: let's say we uh, want to delete line two and four. Um, um, the way Z works is it reads a line, then it goes through all the commands, and if the address for the command matches my line, then uh, the command is executed. And uh, so if I want to delete line uh, two and four, I could think, hey, I'm, I delete line two, and the line that used to be line four is now line three, so I need to delete line three. But uh, yeah, that's not how that works. It's um, uh, just because it's deleted line two, it still says line three is line three. So I need to delete line four to delete line uh, two and four here. Okay, so. Uh, deleting something doesn't change the line counter, the internal line counter, okay? Now, um, that has an interesting feature that's called the hold buffer. Um, okay, the <laughs> manual is not so helpful on that topic, um, but uh, yeah, if you just search for the term hold, uh, there's all sorts of uh, information about the topic. Um, the hold buffer is basically like uh, a clipboard in uh, in your desktop environment, and um, you can interact with that. With uh, H, you can copy something into the hold buffer, and with G, you can copy it back from the hold buffer. Now, when you do that, you would normally do something like. Uh, Let's go to line three. Um, we put the line into the hold buffer. Um, now just putting it into the hold buffer doesn't do much. So um, uh, it will, uh, line three will still be uh, printed. So something that you would normally do after putting something into the hold buffer is uh, clearing the hold buffer. Although I think D also clears the Hold buffer. Uh, I think Z is better for that. Yeah, Z only uh, clears the uh, pattern space, so the thing where uh, Z holds the current line. So we go to line three, copy it to the hold buffer, then we clear the pattern space so that uh, line three isn't printed and then we might uh, read the next line so uh, we put the next line into our hold uh, into our pattern buffer and um, yeah let's say we add capital G appends the hold space to the pattern space so that should effectively swap uh, line three and four and uh, yeah, that's what happened. Uh, we went to line three, uh, put it into the hold buffer, cleared the hold buffer. If if we hadn't cleared the hold buffer, then uh, then line three isn't removed here. Okay, so um, so then we would uh, copy it to the uh, hold buffer. It would still be printed. But um, yeah, um, yeah. Here you can also put your print things in here, um, so you can really do some crazy stuff with these things. Um, yeah, as I said, uh, with H you uh, put the content of the pattern space to the hold buffer. Again, pattern space is where 
uh, that stores the line that it's read and hold space is uh, this clipboard. So uh, yeah, uh, this stuff can be a bit tricky uh, with these uh, additional uh, line feeds here. Um, I personally think it's the best thing to just uh, turn printing off by default and um, then just have multiple commands like uh, line one to one and two, just print them. Then on line three, hold, clear the pattern space, uh, get the next line into the pattern space, append the hold space to the pattern space, print it, and then uh, five to the end, just print normally. Okay, so like this, uh, you turn off the printing by default and then do all the printing manually. And like that, you can uh, avoid all this trouble with these uh, additional uh, line feeds here. So here I've explicitly set uh, print line one and two, swap line three and four, and then print line five to whatever comes behind that, okay? Okay, um, here X swaps the hold and pattern space. There's really too many things here to, uh, to really show you everything. Uh, you can explicitly write to a file. Uh, yeah, as I said, there's, there's so many things that you can do, um, but um, there's one more topic that I want to go into. Um, and that is, uh, um, you can really put all your commands into a script. I will call this script.z here. Um, um, you can put your commands into into a, a file and um, then kind of call that file okay um, so now you can instead of having when, when you uh, write larger scripts and uh, it just makes sense to put that into a file instead of getting insanely large command lines here. So uh, instead of having a, the script on the command line, you can now have dash f script z and then you have the same behavior that we've seen before. We are swapping line three and four. Um, that's also quite useful, especially when you um, when you are doing more complicated things. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, we've already seen a lot of cool things you can do with that. Um, but uh, there's one more thing I want to address here, um, and that is that is actually uh, Turing complete. That's pretty cool if you ask me. Uh, if you don't know Turing machines, don't worry. Uh, this might not be interesting to you. You might uh, just end the video here, but uh, uh, yeah, maybe you learn something about Turing machines. They are relatively similar to automata, but um, uh, more powerful than automata. Um, yeah, maybe you learn something, but I don't want to go too much into Turing machines here. So I have this Turing machine here. That's my go-to example of a Turing machine. Um, what it does is, um, when you have an input, like 111, for example, then uh, this Turing machine starts in, uh, uh, in state A, and while it's reading ones or zeros, it just moves to the right. Okay, so it stays in state A, moves to the right, right, right. 
then it's at the end of the word and uh, then goes to the left and is in state B now. So, so we are in state B now and uh, we are here. Okay, so where the, uh, where the cursor is, that's the head of our Turing machine. Uh, in state B, we walk to the left uh, while we are reading ones and replace them with zeros. So we've replaced that one with a zero, go to the left. We are still reading a one, so we replace that with a zero and go to the left. Another one, we replace that with a zero. And yeah, now we have, we are past the end of the, uh, of our text. So we have this uh, uh, hashtag symbol here. And uh, if we have that uh, situation, we put a one here and uh, stop by terminating here in uh, D. Um, if we had encountered any, uh, yeah, let's say uh, one, zero, one, one, um, if we ran on one, zero, one, one, uh, again, the, in state A, we would just move to the right. Then we go to state B and move to the left ones get replaced with zeros and the first zero we encounter is replaced with a one then we go to state c and in state c we just move to the left until we are at the end and then we move back one step to the right d and then we stop here um, now what we have done is we've just moved to the end of the string um, and uh, then replaced ones with zeros. The first zero that we encounter is replaced with a one, and uh, then we are basically done. And uh, yeah, that's uh, the binary, that's the equivalent of a binary increase by one. Okay, so uh, um, yeah, this is what this Turing machine does. Um, and uh, yeah, I will now replicate that behavior in a Z script. So, um, what I will do now is um, I will represent this whole movement of the head by having an A, B, C, or a D in front of the character that uh, we are um, editing. Okay, so uh, the internal representation is. I will have an A, a B, or a C somewhere, and that means uh, I'm in state A, B, C, or D, and this is where the head is, and the thing uh, right next to it is what the Turing machine is reading. Okay, so um, so we can look for an A one. And if we find an A1, it means we are in state A. Um, so we want to leave the one there and move the head to the right. So we will have the one, but the A is now on the right of that one. Maybe we don't find a one, uh, an A1, maybe we find an A0. Well, then we do the same thing. We leave the zero, move the A behind it. Um, 
if we encounter the end of the line, then uh, we go to state B. Um, but we need to move the head to the left, so whatever is on the left needs to be put on the right of the B. So I will uh, so I will take zero or one as a capture group, and then whatever that is, I will put it behind the B. Okay. So this uh, is the behavior of state A. Uh, in state B, um, yeah, we will have to do this um, also because in B we are moving to the left. So if we are reading a one, we are replacing it with a zero. Then we have we stay in state B, but uh, the thing since we are moving the head to the left, uh, the thing that has been before the B now needs to uh, become uh, the next thing after the B. If we encounter a, a zero, then we turn it into a one and move the head to the left. So whatever has been in front of it is now behind it. Zero is turned into the one. Uh, but this is wrong. Uh, when we encounter a zero, we don't stay in state B, we go to state C. Or if we are if we reach the start of the string um, and still haven't found a zero, then we go to D, uh, put an additional one here, and uh, gather uh, this character here corresponds to the thing that has been a one before. So we've replaced that uh, one with a zero again. But uh, since we cannot move to the left here, uh, we do the next step uh, directly by uh, appending a one in front of that uh, one that has been turned into a zero. And then we are in state D. Uh, if we are in state C, yeah, this is in state C, we are just uh, walking to the left. C1, uh, no matter what we are doing, uh, the one stays a one. Uh, the thing that was before the C is now behind the C, and we stay in state C. Encounter the start of the string, then we just replace a C by a D. Okay, and if 
we encounter a D, then we will remove it because we don't want. Uh, oh, by the way, um, at the begin, at the first thing that we should do is we should put. Uh, We should put an A in front of the input. That should be done first. Uh, here, when we have finished, we are in state D, and we just remove the D. Um, OK, so, so um, this represents state A, this represents state B, this represents state C. Now to um, this whole thing here um, represents one step of the Turing machine, right? So um, if I have uh, um, like uh, one zero A one one, then the first rule here would remove the A one and replace it with one A. And that's the same thing as moving the head one to the right. Okay, um, but uh, that's only one step. We, of course, we want to uh, run this Turing machine uh, from start to finish. So we need to take this step over and over and over again until this D has uh, matched. Okay, and uh, this one thing up here is only supposed to be run once because we only once add this A to the front of it. So um, yeah, what uh, Z offers us is um, you can have uh, labels, just like uh, in assembler or low level programming languages. Um, you can have a colon and then some name, like I put the name loop here. And um, down here, you can just have B, uh, which is like the go to. Um, and say loop. So um, so this would uh, then, um, after we've uh, run one step of the Turing machine, we, we jump back up here. And um, then uh, um, we do the next step. But um, we want, of course, we want this uh, whole thing to stop once we've reached uh, state D. You know, when we've encountered state D, then um, we want to stop. So let's say we have a label down here. Call it stop. And now we want to do something here that uh, would jump to the stop label. But uh, yeah, this would always jump to the stop label. Um, so B is an unconditional jump. Um, so we instead we put a T here. Um, and the T um, only jumps if a an S has matched before that. Okay, so uh, down here we would want to print the final result, right? And uh, maybe let's also print intermediate steps. Okay, so. Okay, what has happened here? Um, we've moved the, um, so this is a starting, uh, the first line, the, the way it's uh, at the start, you know, the first print inside the loop. Then we do one step, uh, 
uh, yeah, there must have been another step in between that has been hidden. Yeah, we first uh, replaced this a1 by 1a, and then the next character was a zero, so this has also already uh, worked. So that's why um, the a has also, uh, also been moved behind that zero. Um, but uh, then, yeah, this whole thing has stopped. And why is that? Um, the problem is that um, this t um, does that jump um, when any s has uh, matched. So uh, we wanted this to only jump if this s has matched, but um, yeah, the problem is if any of these has matched, which this one has, uh, that's also already enough for this t to say, oh, some s has matched, I do my jump, and then it uh, terminates. So um, yeah, if we want to uh, do all this, we need to be a bit smarter. Um, so we might do it like this. We might just jump to the loop conditionally here. So if one of these has matched, then we loop back. Um, and I think that should work. Um, Okay, now we move the a uh, to the end of the string, then we move the b to the left, and yeah, the result is what we expected. Uh, the, the last two ones are replaced by zeros, and the first zero that it encountered was replaced with a one. Um, but I think that output is not so nice, because we have, in some uh, situations we have multiple steps in one. Uh, uh, we, we have multiple steps between two lines and uh, I don't like that so much. So instead I will do T loop here in all the lines. So we uh, continue the uh, loop immediately when one of these rules has matched. And then if we have found a D, then we go to stop. Oh, that's actually not... Uh, necessary because that's the next step anyhow. Okay, so okay. Good. So we append the A, then the A moves to the right, turns into a B, it starts replacing ones with zeros. Here it encounters the first zero, replaces it with a one and goes to uh, state C. C walks to the left. Uh, when it reaches the front, it is replaced with a D. The D is removed. And then uh, this final uh, print is the result down here. Okay. Um, yeah, this is the final print from our script, and uh, yeah, this is because uh, yeah, once we finished processing the input, then that just prints the uh, buffer. So uh, if we just turn off printing, then 
it doesn't do that. So, yeah. Anyhow, um, I hope this uh, really illustrates the Turing completeness of that. Uh, yeah. As I said, this is really such a useful program and um, when you start doing uh, stuff with your loops and uh, the hold buffer and working on things, uh, there's really no end to what you can do with it. So uh, I hope with this video I could convince you that that is uh, one of the most useful programs out there. Uh, I use it all the time and I hope uh, that you are now able to use it to your advantage also and really get the most out of it. And I absolutely love this program and I hope that I could uh, ignite that same fire in you. Um, and uh, yeah, I think this is enough for today. So uh, if you like this video, like it, share it, subscribe and see you next time.